I think nationalism is one of the most difficult questions for anarchists to deal with, and I, frankly, I don't think we've dealt with it very well. On the one hand, of course, nationalism contradicts anarchist philosophy because nationalism as an ideology that believes that every person should identify with a particular territory or a language or a culture and a, and a state to go along with it, that's a clear violation of anarchist principles. But um, And so I understand why anarchists often reject nationalism completely. And I, and I think in a free world we will not have any nations. But I think what anarchists don't always do is recognize the role that national liberation struggles have sometimes played in challenging imperialism and in challenging capitalism. And that therefore nationalism sometimes has opportunities as well as um, uh, as well as problems. Nationalism is a contradictory phenomenon. In the United States, I think black nationalism is a perfect example of that. Yes, we can all point to uh, forms of black nationalism that are narrow-minded and chauvinistic and and that that you might want to say are black supremacists or something. I, there's, there's, you can find those kind of organizations or crackpot groups uh, you know, sprinkled throughout the United States, sure. But if you look at an organization like the Black Panther Party, that was uh, was was black nationalists that believed in black power, but also was not afraid to work with white folks, and that also had a, a strong analysis of capitalism and colonialism, and that's and that basically argued the Panthers or Malcolm X who argued that before we can before we can build a broad working class, black folks need to organize themselves because we have been so uh, broken apart by the system of, of slavery and segregation, that we now need to come together amongst ourselves first before we can unite with other groups on a basis of strength. That sort of nationalism seems to me to be uh, potentially useful. It might always have dangerous pitfalls uh, that have to be avoided. And I think, but, uh, but it doesn't mean that nationalism is necessarily a reactionary force in the struggle for a free world. I think you know the political, uh, the revolutionary and, and the revolutionary France Fanon. I think has probably the best analysis of it. And when Fanon, who was in Algeria, struggling against French colonialism, and and he said nationalism was is was necessary in that at first phase of the revolution, in order for the Algerians to come together as one, in order to overthrow the French imperialists. But almost as soon as that happens then nationalism became an obstacle because then the middle class Algerians began to see themselves as the new rulers, the new elites, and, and to speak for the working class. And he said at that point, we need to shift from national consciousness to social consciousness, which I think he means by, by class consciousness, and that those middle class forces need to be swept away or at least subordinated to the larger working class role. And, and at that point, nationalism becomes a fetter rather than a means to liberation. Uh, that seems to me to be a, uh, uh, a much more useful way of understanding nationalism, especially in places like the United States, or maybe if you want to think about Palestinian nationalism, for example, uh, than a simple blanket rejection.